qualifying for the United States Grand Prix is over and Lando Norris in the McLaren is on pole position as Max Verstappen couldn't set a final lap due to George Russell crashing. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, qualifying is over and it is another pole position for Lando Norris. But to be honest, he was probably saved by George Russell, as Russell dropped the Mercedes and hit the wall hard to bring qualifying to an early end. But nevertheless, Norris got the pole lap when it counted and will be starting just ahead of rival Max Verstappen. At Texas, even though there was a sprint race earlier, there was a large amount of circuit evolution, and you can see that when you compare the lap times from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3. And when you look at these comparisons, you can see that in Sector 1, at the S sections, Norris can carry significantly more speed and keeps on throttle for much longer than in Q1, where there is a clear lift here. Also, at the end of the long straight, you can see Norris in Q3 braked a little bit earlier, but actually used that to his advantage to get a much better exit and better traction. The better traction would probably also come from the fact that the circuit is more rubbered in. Then, going into the penultimate corner, Norris is able to carry significantly more speed yet again, showing how the circuit has evolved and grip has come towards the drivers. Norris at that corner carried 18 kilometers per hour more speed, which is significant, especially when both of these laps were done on the same compound of tires. Overall, the lap time improved by 1.7 seconds, which is absolutely massive. Yesterday in sprint qualifying, Verstappen improved by 1.8 seconds. However, that was from medium to softs. This time, it was done by going from soft tires to another set of soft tires. There is one caveat, I suppose, and that is the first run in Q1 was done on some used soft tires, but still, it is significant. For what it's worth, the pole lap for the Grand Prix was half a second faster than the pole lap for the sprint race from the day before, showing how the circus has gotten faster and also how the teams have been able to dial the cars in better for the Grand Prix. Let's now take a look at the top speeds that the teams are able to reach, and what can we see here? Well, what we can see is that V-Carb managed to use the toe for Yuki Tsunoda, as he had the fastest car in a straight line with 334 kilometers per hour. But look at the McLaren cars. They are by some distance the slowest cars in a straight line, potentially indicating that they are running with more downforce probably because they were starting to struggle with the tyres towards the end of the sprint race. But that could leave Norris vulnerable to Max Verstappen, if Max can get DRS early on in the race. So, we've seen the top speeds, but now in the midfield, what team impressed? Well, I have to say Alpine this weekend looked like a team reborn. The orange livery might have actually turned them into a McLaren, because Pierre Gasly was absolutely fantastic. In Q1 and Q2, he was getting in amongst it with the top teams, and by the end of Q3, he was less than a tenth away from starting in 5th place and beating Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. So, let's compare the lap of Gasly to Piastri, and when you look at these two laps, it's significant that Alpine in Sect 1 is able to initially carry a lot more speed into S corners, showing that actually, they do seem to have a good car that can change direction at a high speed, and at one point, Gasly was ahead, but makes a mistake at the end of that first sector, and Piastri from there becomes the faster driver. But also, look at the final corners. Gasly gets a great run and almost beats Piastri to the line. For Alpine, this is an incredible run. The only question is, can the car make it to the end of the race? If they can, then it is possible that Alpine can score some much needed World Championship points. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video so far, then would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, it was a very bad day. 
In the sprint race, they had shocking pace over the stint, and in qualifying, Lewis Hamilton found himself being beaten by a Sauber, and George Russell threw the car into the wall and will be starting in 6th place, which is not really that good. In the sprint, Russell started at the front and really lost ground, and this is a concern for Mercedes. The tyre wear looks to be very, very high on their car, and you can see that here when you look at the pace of Ferrari, Verstappen and Russell from the sprint race. Here you can see Russell only made the medium tyres last about 7 or 8 laps before he really started to lose pace in the tyres, and he cannot afford for that to happen in the Grand Prix. I anticipate Mercedes will have made some changes to make the tyres last a little bit better, but still, they are definitely on the back foot for this weekend. And now, Russell will have to take some old parts into the race instead of the new upgrades. For Hamilton, it is like the old days where he was beaten by Bottas. The only difference is Bottas is in the slowest car this weekend, which sums up Hamilton's qualifying. In the race, Hamilton can get to the points, but I will be surprised if he is any better than P9. For Ferrari, it was a great day as Carlos Sainz takes the Ferrari to third place and Charles Leclerc will be in fourth place, showing that there is still great pace in the red car this weekend. The concern for Ferrari though will be the fact that they are starting next to each other. In the sprint race, there was a giant fight between the two cars, which was very entertaining, but probably not what Fred Vasseur wanted to see. Let's compare the two qualifying laps then to see how Sainz just edged out Charles Leclerc. And when you look at these two laps, much like in sprint qualifying, Sainz was a lot faster in the S section compared to Leclerc. In sprint qualifying, Leclerc did struggle with the car unsettling, but this time I think it was just a case of Sainz being faster through there. Leclerc was stronger on the brakes though compared to Carlos, but really the damage was done in that first sector. In the Grand Prix, I do wonder if Ferrari will use some team orders and tell their drivers not to fight each other, especially as there are good points on the table for them and the sprint race was getting a little bit aggressive between the two of them. For Red Bull, it was so close to pole position, but Verstappen missed out on it due to a mistake in the penultimate corner. However, it has to be said, Red Bull are back and Verstappen will be very confident, especially after the sprint race which he won with ease and set the fastest lap on the final lap just to rub some salt into the wounds of McLaren. Let's compare the pole lap of Norris to Verstappen and when you look at these two laps it is very clear that the Red Bull was faster. In sector 1 as we've seen all weekend, Verstappen was on another level in that Red Bull significantly faster in that S section. However, I do want to highlight that look at all of the braking zones. Verstappen is slower and carrying less minimum speed, showing it is in a better place, but still not quite there and quite as good as McLaren. But before the penultimate corner, Verstappen was around 3 tenths ahead of Norris, but going into that penultimate corner, you can see he made a pretty big mistake and lost pole position to Lando Norris. In the Grand Prix, Verstappen can be very confident after the sprint race that the Red Bull will have pace to win the Grand Prix and probably put an end to any discussion of there being a fight for the Drivers' Championship as he will once again extend the lead in the Drivers' Championship. And finally, for McLaren, it was pole position but they don't look as strong as they have done recently. Norris took pole due to a Verstappen error, and Oscar Piastri looked to be struggling quite a bit. This is a different McLaren to what we have seen recently, and to be honest, I would not be surprised if the upgrades have actually taken the balance away from McLaren a little bit, and I don't think Norris will be winning this Grand Prix, and to be honest, I'm not really sure what Oscar Piastri is going to do either. I'm not sure if he will be able to beat both of the Ferrari cars in the race. So, with that in mind then, what are my final predictions for the United States Grand Prix? Well, I think the top midfield team and midfield driver, provided they can get to the end of the race, will be Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. 
If the Alpine does have an issue, which it usually does, then it will probably be one of the Haas cars, and I'm still going to go with Nico Hulkenberg, even though Magnussen out-qualified him. But what about the top five in the Grand Prix? Well, for P5, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P4 will be Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P3 will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. P2 will be Lando Norris. And I think Max Verstappen is finally going to win another Grand Prix. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.